ta 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 Hey everyone, Cameron Schreiner here from Georgia Tech, and happy Friday. If it's not Friday for you, I'm sorry, and I hope your Friday will get here as soon as possible. But until then, in today's episode of LaBam, we're going over the LEGO light sensor and how to use it in competition. I'm going to give you some basic ideas on hopefully where to get started. So until then, grab a LEGO robot and a computer, and let's get the ball rolling. Okay, so a lot of teams like using line tracing or at least like the idea of line tracing and competition. So I'm going to show you how it works. But first we need to build the program. Now there are many ways to build an actual line trace program, so I'm just going to show you one method, but you don't have to use this method. So first of all I'm going to put a loop. And I've already pre-timed my line and it takes about 10 seconds. So I'm going to program this loop to continue for 10 seconds. Now, inside for line tracing, you need to make a decision. Am I on blue tape or am I on white floor? So in this case, we need a switch case. And the switch case is the robot's decision-making program code. But I don't need the touch sensor, so let's go ahead and change it to a light sensor. Now, if you remember from my last video, my blue tape is closest to black, so I'm going to be looking for black first. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because if you notice, black is in top, and if I choose white, white is now on top. But in this case, where each color is doesn't matter. So the code on top is everything that happens when my robot sees white floor. And everything on the bottom is what happens when the robot sees blue tape. So I'm going to add a movement block to each. And when I see blue tape, I want one of my motors to spin. And I'm going to turn the power down to 50. And I want it to keep spinning forever until the next condition is met. So then when it sees white floor, it's going to spin the opposite wheel to try to get back to blue tape. Set it to 50. And unlimited. Now I'm also going to add a stop motor code. And this code is not necessary, but it's good practice to get into a programming base mindset because the robot is completely ignorant. You have to tell it every step. So this code will work just fine just by having the motor switch, but having the other motor stop when one is moving is just good practice for when code gets more complicated later. On that note, if you notice, this takes up a lot of space on your screen. And if I were to add another switch case inside of my switch case, it takes up even more space. And if you notice, if you do this many times, it can start to get very crowded and you can't see anything. So the switch case actually has a really cool feature. If you come down here to display and uncheck the flat view, it'll put it into a linear based code. And it'll have your true and false here in tabs. Now you don't have to do this, in my opinion, it just makes things a little easier to see. So let's go ahead and download this to the robot and see how it works. Wait for it to compile. All right, let's take a look at this on the course. It's time for another handheld camera extravaganza. So let's go check out to see what that line tracing program actually does. So I'm going to go ahead and run my line tracing. And you notice how it zigzags across the line. But one key fact is, is if you notice, look what the light sensor is doing. It's not actually following a line. It's actually just following the two different shades of color here. So what the robot does is when the light sensor sees blue tape, it will move one wheel forever until it sees white table. And it's moved that wheel forward a little bit. Once the light sensor sees fully white table, then it's going to move the opposite wheel forward forever until it sees blue tape again, also moving that wheel forward. And that ends up being a zigzag motion up the line. 
So like you just saw. So the issue is, is that a lot of people think this is truly line tracing, but it's actually just tracing the two different colors. I could set two pieces of paper side by side that have a different color and it would do the same thing. But the issue with line tracing also is that it has a chance of coming off the line at different angles. It, maybe this time it'll stop like this, the next time it'll stop like that. And it can be very slight, but in competition, a slight change in angle can mean a huge difference if you're trying to do something accurately. So line tracing is really good for if you have some sort of objective that's next to the line that's, let's say, you have to bump over. That doesn't require a lot of accuracy, so that's when line tracing is useful. Otherwise, I would only use line tracing to get to a general area on the map. Otherwise, I would use the driving until you hit the line to stop your robot code because that can be more accurate for more complicated challenges. Okay, so if you noticed when I was giving you ideas on how to use the line tracing in competition, I was a little bit vague. And that's because the aim of the game is for your team to come up with a unique solution to these challenges. So I'm giving you the start, the basics, to help get the ball rolling, so to speak. But it's up to you guys to figure out how to apply it in competition, which is the most exciting part, really, because then you can say you did it all on your own, right? So I'm going to give you one more example. Instead of using seconds to terminate the line tracing loop, we're going to use the light sensor itself to be the terminating condition. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. So let's go back to the computer. So this is the program that we built earlier. And if you notice, if the loop is not on forever, then that means whatever type of loop this is, is the terminating condition that will take your code outside of the loop and you can start doing other things. Because if this was forever, it would never stop doing this. And earlier we had this as a time loop. So then after 10 seconds, this loop would terminate and it would run all the code afterwards. But now we're going to use a sensor as a terminating condition instead. So before, I had just timed my line, like I said. But you could use any of the other sensors to stop this loop. So if we had the touch sensor, it could stop this loop after the touch sensor is bumped into a wall or a game piece. And then same thing with the ultrasonic sensor, if it senses the wall or a game piece. But in this case, we're going to use the light sensor to judge to see a color change on the ground that will stop us line tracing. So what I've done is before I had blue tape and white table, but I've put a piece of tin foil at the end of the blue tape. So in order to make this loop stop when it sees tinfoil, I'm going to have to set the ratio to about 90%. So what's going to happen is the robot is going to start and it's going to enter our line tracing loop. And if it sees, if it sees blue tape, it's going to run the wheels forever until it sees white floor. And when it sees white floor, it'll do the exact opposite, run back until it sees blue tape. But after it initiates this code, it's going to check to see if it is also seeing a color that is brighter than 90% reflection. So the table that I'm using is about 70% reflection, and the tin foil is around 95%. So this means that no matter how long it's been line tracing, it should exit this loop when it sees a reflection greater than 90%. And then outside the loop, after it's exited, is all the code that you would want your robot to do after it's stopped. So in my case, since I don't have uh, a game piece to knock over or something along those lines, I'm just going to have my robot simply stop once it touches tinfoil. So let's go see how this program performs. I've already downloaded it, but let's go to the field. Okay, so we're going back to the handheld camera, and we're going to check out to see how the new line tracing program works. So I'm going to run it just like before, but this time it should stop when it hits the piece of tinfoil. So he's going along, it's going along, and bam. So once it's hit the tinfoil, it's now stopped. And no matter where I put it on the line, it will run until it sees the tinfoil. And I can put it back to the back. 
and it will always run until it touches the tinfoil. So you can use this in competition because the field mat has a bunch of different colors on it. And so you can use those colors to your advantage by making your robot stop at certain points on the mat just by using their level of reflection. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of LaBam when we go over the ultrasonic sensor. Light sensor, light sensor, light sensor, light sensor.